In this lecture, we'll discuss our evidence for the mysterious dark energy and learn what astronomers predict as the ultimate fate of our universe. The large-scale development of the universe is governed by two competing processes, the ongoing expansion that began in the Big Bang and the gravitational attraction of matter in the universe. The expansion drives galaxies apart while the gravitational attraction assembles galaxies and larger-scale structures. The relative strength of these processes will determine how the universe evolves. If gravity is strong enough, the expansion will someday halt and the universe will begin collapsing and heating back up, eventually ending in a fiery and cataclysmic crunch. But if the total strength of gravity were too weak, gravity would never be able to slow the expansion enough for it to halt and reverse. The universe would face an icy end as the galaxies moved ever farther apart. So which is it? For many years, this question seemed to hinge on the amount of dark matter in the universe. If there is enough dark matter, then our universe will collapse. But about 20 years ago, observations began to show the unexpected. The expansion of the universe isn't slowing down. Quite the opposite. It appears to be speeding up. We take the cause of the accelerated expansion to be dark energy. Gravity from regular matter and dark matter is pulling things in, and dark energy is pushing everything out. The estimated age of the universe will depend on both of these things. For example, if gravity had always been slowing the expansion, then the speeds of galaxies flying away from us would have been greater in the past. This means it took less time for them to reach their current distances. We would therefore infer a younger age for the universe. On the other hand, if a repulsive force had always accelerated the expansion, then the galaxies would have been moving away from one another more slowly in the past. It would have taken them more time to reach their current distances, and we would infer an older age for the universe. I mentioned earlier that observations suggest the expansion of the universe is accelerating. Basically, astronomers have been trying to measure how the expansion rate has changed over time by looking at recessional velocities and distances of galaxies across the universe. These are not easy measurements to make. Astronomers need to determine both the redshifts and distances of galaxies that are extremely far away. You may recall that the most reliable standard candles for great distances are white dwarf supernovae. Therefore, it's the white dwarf supernovae that have helped reveal how our universe is expanding. To understand how astronomers use supernovae, let's go back to considering a recollapsing universe. This is a theoretical plot of the average distance between galaxies over time. This dotted line marks the time right now. The theoretical curve for the universe expanding and then collapsing looks like this. The curve begins at the time the average distance between the galaxies was zero, which means the time of the Big Bang according to the recollapsing model. The average distance between galaxies gets bigger and bigger until it maxes out and then the universe collapses back down. This model predicts an age of the universe of only 4.4 billion years. We know from other observations that this is far too young and can't be correct. Now let's consider a model of an accelerating universe. In this model, the average distance between galaxies is getting larger and larger over time. Now we can't see into the future, but we can look to the past. Remember, the farther we look in distance, the further back we look in time. Therefore, if astronomers measure the redshifts of galaxies at different distances, we can see the average spacing of galaxies across time. The redshifts are measured by looking at spectra, and the distances are determined by using white dwarf supernovae as standard candles. Here are the data. Although there is some scatter, the data appear to match the accelerating universe curve. 
The acceleration of the expansion of the universe implies the existence of some force that acts to push galaxies apart. And the source of this force is what we are calling dark energy. Unfortunately, we have no idea what dark energy is. So here we are. The best observations we have imply that 5% of the universe's total mass energy is made up of ordinary matter. Protons, electrons, the stuff we're used to. This is the stuff of stars and hot gas within galaxy clusters. Some form of exotic dark matter, most likely in the form of weakly interacting massive particles, makes up about 27% of the universe's mass energy. And finally, there's dark energy. We don't know what it is, but it makes up about 68% of the universe's total mass energy. Dark energy accounts for both the observed acceleration of the expansion of the universe and in the pattern of temperatures observed in the cosmic microwave background. We may not know exactly what dark matter or dark energy consists of, but measurements of how much of each is in the universe are getting more precise. The same models that have allowed astronomers to take an inventory of the universe also provide an estimate of the universe's age. The model that gives the best agreement to observations gives an age of the universe of about 13.8 billion years, plus or minus 37. We can use physics to make some predictions about what will happen to our universe in the far future. If the expansion of the universe continues to accelerate slowly, as it is now, galaxies and galaxy clusters will remain gravitationally bound far into the future. Eventually, though, star formation will end as all the available material gets caught up in planets, brown dwarfs, white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. In about a trillion years, the longest lived stars will run out of nuclear fuel and galaxies will go dark. The only action will be if objects such as brown dwarfs or white dwarfs collide within a galaxy. It would be a rare occurrence, but over enough time, these collisions can happen. Physicists predict that protons have a half-life of at least 10 to the 33 years. If that's the case, then by about 10 to the 40 years, Earth and all other atomic matter will have disintegrated into radiation and subatomic particles. And finally, black holes will evaporate, turning their mass energy into Hawking radiation, named for the physicist Stephen Hawking. The largest black holes will last until the universe is about 100 to the 100 years old. After that, the universe will consist of nothing but individual photons and subatomic particles. Nothing new will ever happen, and no events will ever occur that would allow an observer to distinguish past from future. The universe will have reached the end of time. That's all for the fate of the universe. Take care, and I will talk to you again soon.